We're set. All right. Well, welcome everybody out there in TV land <laughs> and the committee. So let's uh, call this uh, um, Any Wells Valley Water District Finance Committee to order at 242. So with that, are there any committee or public comments? No. Hearing none, we'll move on to fraud risk discussion. And we have nothing to report. That's always good news. Thank you. All right. Uh, number four, the GA imported uh, water cost. Uh, discuss the water costs and potential impact to customers. I think, George, this has to do with you putting together uh, what you got planned for the board meeting, I take it. That's correct. And Ty has uh, provided me with some initial numbers, and we have you know, uh, reviewed them, and they will be incorporated into a fairly simple four or five page PowerPoint presentation for the board on the 8th. Okay, and the question I have is since this is probably going to be press worthy, which I'm sure it is, is there a simple summation sheet that just keeps, you know, to keep it simple? I know four or five. So we do pages. have a, I mean, yeah, you can't, you, I wouldn't, I wouldn't depend on uh, necessary the press to break that down into some final numbers. And so I'm not sure whether you're going to have a summation. It, it will have a, it'll, it'll be. Just, okay. If your water bill is this, it's going to be this. Okay. That's it. That's simple. Right. And, and are you addressing potential uh, property tax increases or, you, or can't you do that? Or That or, part we didn't. We're just assuming. Um, well, I, we will probably just make a statement. State, that, a statement. Yeah. There's just going to be a statement that they could take some of that and move it over to yeah. property taxes. But. So what's your decision? We, so you're you're using the assumption that everything estimated for the project is going to go is going to be paid for through rates through rates, either bond issues that go into rates, um, okay, rather than bond issues that go on property tax. Right. So what you- If you prefer with, one that's broken out, I, I have a general I don't know whether you can. Goes. I think that because what happens is you're showing the impact to our customers, yeah. that there could be a potential impact to every property owner. And maybe it's just a statement, like you said, yeah. there could be a, you know, based on how they decide to pay for the capital cost, a, a, a good portion may end up on your property tax bill or something like that. Yeah. But either way, you'll see an increase. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Or the state in property taxes once a year is still twenty bucks on your bill every month. Yeah. Yeah. Regardless. Yeah. It's going to be something. All right. Well, it'll be exciting to see that on on Monday because I know that that's another thing that uh, they're not just screaming for that report on on safe yield. They're screaming for that that analysis that you're doing. Yeah. Based on the analysis. Yeah. And can I, can I ask that we step back to number um, three for just a second? I did want to make a comment. Sure. So I did attend the, uh, the Inyo Kern um, board meeting last night, and there was a there was considerable discussion about uh, apparently people were left off the tax, like a, a large percentage of people that were on an assessment district ended up getting left off. Now, it's not really fraud, no. but it's but it was a case where I guess every year you have to, if you're, if you're doing an assessment on somebody, like – Apparently they 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 had oversight where the tax rolls weren't updated and it ended up over a number of years that like a third of the people that should have been paying taxes to pay for this loan they took out 30 years ago weren't even paying. So these are things that you know we should you know, lessons learned from other districts. We're lucky that those sorts of things don't happen to us, but it's it's certainly worth discussing because it was a, it was the main focus of their discussion last night and pretty contentious because there were a lot of people who perceived it as new property taxes being levied on them when it really was property taxes that they should have been paying for years that somehow got left off the, the adjustments and the updates to the at the at the county level. The only assessment I remember, which was on a property tax, was by where I live out there. And that's I think that's expired now. I think that's done. So so yeah, ninety one one, I believe. Yeah. It's expired. We do have some that are the um, properties that are delinquent in their payments and the county still bills them. And I see, we see some of that rolling in every year, every now and then, okay. yeah, every month along with prop during the property tax time. So I think it was a lot. It's not very many that are yeah. outstanding. I mean, for I the, paid mine. It's all been, <laughs> yeah, the, the bond that it went, went to pay for is done and paid for. Yeah. So it's just kind of, okay. Outstanding. I thought it was mentioning because I think the board's going to probably hear a lot about in your current over the, Oh yeah. I think we probably years. Would. Okay, any questions on the imported water costs or what the plan is for Monday? With that, then we'll go to the financial statements. Ty, it's, you've got the floor. Okay, so this is the preliminary end of year okay. um, report. 
Uh, that being said, there's still things that we're going to be accruing over the next couple of months as bills come in and, and other calculations are made. I made a guess, a best guess estimate for um, a, what, uh, the revenue accruals as well as some of the expenditure accruals. And so if you see um, essentially down at the bottom, the net is a negative 367,000 versus the budget the net of a negative 681,000. Okay. So, so better than budget, but I do expect that number to creep down a little bit more as okay. we get some of those residual expenditures and calculations factored back in. I think we'll be close to what our budgeted number is. Okay. And, and isn't this time of the year when there's some kind of a accrual or something for total water sales or yeah, I estimated that. Oh, you estimated in here. So okay. I've got an estimate in there. Cool. It, Fine. it should be a little close, but the, it'll, there's some fine tuning. Um, you can see uh, the biggest movers here really are the GSA fees as we got that 4390 right. number set in stone, more or less, and then just the legal costs. Right. And then, of course, down at the bottom of the total cash paid out to the GSA is 14126000 to date. Wow. So $11.5 in replenishment and almost... 2.6, wow. <sighs> Gives me heartburn every time I look at it. <laughs> All right. So from since 2019, the revenues to expenses ratios are better than they were back in 2019, 2020. Not too bad. Chart on the back. Well done. Oh, I see it, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know you're always uh, working hard on this, Ty, and I surely appreciate it, especially at these in these times with everything that's going on. And all yeah, this. it's a, yeah, it's yeah. a bit. It's a bit. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I don't have any questions on that, David? None. All right, so we'll move on to the uh, accounts payable disbursements. I've had a chance to glance at it already, so I might ask a couple questions while you're looking at it. Uh, don't choke when you see the lawyer fees. Okay, I, I already did month. that. I, yeah, I already did that. But uh, what catches me now is Parker Groundwater and and uh, and Ramble, of course. And I'm hoping they're getting close to completing the model. I know that Ty is as well. <laughs> we'll see if we can get something straightened out this next uh, this next week with them to see how much longer. I just get the feeling sometimes it's like an engineering project that eventually someone needs to say, you're done. Because you could always find a way to keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going and, and refine and refine. Oh, look, somebody developed a new program we can use and let's put that in. And let's open that, that paralysis by analysis. Yeah, that that in as well, too. There they are. And and uh, I know, George, you're well aware of that. I'm sure you're talking to Tim and all those people about uh, it's time we start wrapping some of this stuff up. Yeah, I think at, at some point, you know, we we're in the midst of an adjudication and the, the judge is going to want answers and he's going to want testimony and he's going to need our best, you know, our, our best science put forward. And so we need to be prepared when that day comes with uh, everything ready to go. And uh, I don't see anything. The Filtronics, is that the last for them? That, that was payment for the receipt. Yep. Okay. That one's done. I don't think I have... And Krieger, got, at least Krieger and Stewart's, they're very reasonable. <laughs> you know? All right. I don't see anything on here. Dave, would you like to recommend? Uh, I'd like to recommend we go ahead and pass this on to the board for and final approval. I concur. We'll go ahead and uh, recommend approval by the board. So it's approved. Write those checks. All right. <laughs> they're already written. They're already written. <laughs> You're ratifying. <laughs> We're just ratifying that. Okay. Future gen items. Anything that we need to talk about? Nope. Wow. I guess that's it. Nothing from you guys. Nothing anything from the on the uh, the budget that you guys want presented at the upcoming board workshops or anything in particular that would be useful. I I don't think so. Typically about the only time we talk budget items at the workshop, if we're looking at some long-term bond issues or something like that, if I'm not mistaken, but as for general budget, I'd, unless you figured it's something. So I thought yeah. I'd ask the question. Yeah. All right. With that, we'll adjourn the meeting at 2.51. Wow. All that driving for nine minutes. I know. <laughs> oh, well.